Hey everybody, it's Derek Colmartin from CodeOpinion.com and today I want to take a look at in-memory caching and how we can do so with the Foundatio library. So first before we jump into the code, I just wanted to explain what Foundatio is. Um, I stumbled upon it when I was looking at exception lists. So uh, I was blogging about exception lists. I was using it for dealing with exception handling, log handling. It's a remote service um, that they provide at exceptionlist.io. So I highly recommend checking out their site. Um, so when I stumbled upon uh, Foundatio, I was looking at all the features it provided, and one of them was in-memory caching. So that's what we're going to cover today, and I'm going to create a demo app um, that I also have posted on my blog, um, which also the source code is available on GitHub. So let's get into it. So for my demo app, what I'm going to do is create a just a console app that's going to make callouts to this fixer.io which provides um, exchange rates. So what I'm going to do is just create a console app where you can input uh, a given day and it's going to give you the exchange rate for uh, a USD to Canadian conversion. So this is the site we're going to use, fixer.io. Um, you can notice they have a JSON API that, um, that returns all the different currencies. The only one I'm really going to care about is the Canadian, but this is the web service that we're ultimately going to use, and this is the data that we're going to cache. All right, so here's my blank console application. Uh, first thing I need to do is get the latest NuGet package of Foundatio. So I'm going to open up the package management console, and let's do a install package Foundatio. Once that downloads it and its dependencies, we can check it out in the packages config and we can see that we downloaded those. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is create a class that's gonna represent the data that we're getting back from the JSON API, uh, which is basically exchange rate data. So let's call this actually currency exchange. And if we take a look at the API, I'm pretty sure it had a base currency, a date time, and it had a list of rates from other ex foreign exchanges. So this could be a dictionary of string decimal. Oops. Uh, we'll call this rates, I believe the property was. All right, so now let's make our app take some input, get a date, and make the call out using HTTP client. Uh, that way we can actually save the data. One of the cool features with the um, Foundatio's in-memory caching is it has the ability to store only a like a maximum number of items in its cache. So that way when it exceeds that, it just drops the last one used um, out of its list, its internal list, um, which I thought was a pretty cool feature. So I'm gonna demonstrate that one in this demo. So the first thing we can do with Foundatio is let's actually create a cache. So we got our in-memory cache client. Um, and like I said, it has a max items property on it. Oops, probably should say new. And let's say we only want to use the first three. So there's our cache. So since we're making an HTTP call, we're also going to create an HTTP client. And let's create that as a private static. Now, Let's create a method that's actually going to make our HTTP call itself. All right, so what I have here is a little snippet um, just to save some time here. Um, and this is going to be our get currency rate, which is going to take a date time. 
Um, we're going to go use the HTTP client to fetch out this data and deserialize it into the object of currency exchange that we created. So this is that method. Alright, so I'm going to throw in another quick snippet to get us moving along. I'm just going to put this in the main. Ultimately, I'm just going to create an endless loop that will let you enter a date time, or just a data rather, I should say, um, and then it will call our get currency rate. So here's our loop, nothing special. Just enter the date, read from it, parse out the date, just do some basic checking, it's just for demo purposes. Uh, and then it's going to get our rate and print it out for our USD to Canadian conversion. So now just to check to see if this code's working, let's start it up. Uh, so we're going to enter, I guess, the beginning of the year just to make sure that it's actually getting data back. It is, so we know that's working. Let's enter another date. We can see that we're getting back data from the web service. All right, so let's jump back to the code and add some cash handling here to our get currency rate. So what we can do, uh, the first thing is let's actually check to see if the item is in cash already, which at this point it's not because we haven't set it, but that's where we'll start. So we can use our in-memory cache, and there's a get async uh, method. Everything's asynchronous in here. Since, since we are not using an asynchronous method, we'll just call result. So let's get our currency exchange. It's going to be our type, and the key is just going to be the year, month, day. So since this is asynchronous, it's called dot result, so it waits. Um, so at this point, we're checking to see if the cache exists. So this kind of has a nullable, kind of feels like a nullable type. So we can look at it actually has a value. If it does, at this point, we can say, okay, it, we did get it from cache. So let's just write that out for debug purposes. And at this point, we can return the actual value. So, so far, so good. If we got to, if we continue on, we know we need to get the value. So at this point, we once we got our exchange rate, instead of returning it, we want to now cache it. So we can add our exchange value that we just fetched out. I'll uh, we'll use our key, which is the date time, and let's wait for this one since it's also asynchronous. And that's pretty much it. This simple way to fetch out the value, check to see if it exists, if it has value, return it if it does, otherwise we continue on hitting the API, deserializing it, adding it to our cache and returning. So now let's give this a test and when we test let's also remember that we set the max items as three, meaning only the last three um, recent uh, cache items will be uh, kept in memory. All right, so let's do the beginning of the year again. We see that it's fetching from the service. Um, let's do the second day, the third day. So we have our first three, which are going to be obviously getting the service. Now, if I go back to um, the first of the month, it's still in cash, obviously. If I go now and do the fourth, we're essentially now going to be bumping out January 2nd. So we can see that the 4th is now in cache. Uh, and now this one shouldn't hit the service when I fetch out the 2nd of January because it was the one bumped out. So now we can see it's fetching from the service. So if I call the 1st again, we see that we can get it from cache. So that's it. We have our basic demo working app using Foundatio's in-memory caching client. Um, I have a blog post outlining the same basic premise as this video. Um, you can check that out at codeopinion.com. Um, the source code for this demo and that blog are available on GitHub. I'll have the links in the description. Um, if you want to check out more with Foundatio and the other features it has in caching, um, such as the Redis hybrid cache client, which looks really interesting, allows you to use the Redis cache client and in memory both at the same time. Um, it lo looks really interesting. Love to hear your feedback. 
please visit codeopinion.com and subscribe for more .NET related videos. Thanks.